it's a just a short video about the Lenovo all-in-one computer this is a C440 series all-in-one um, the error is 1962 no operating system found it pops up on the screen in sort of a DOS font um, you can fiddle with the BIOS you can check it out it doesn't you know, the, altering the bar doesn't fix it if you uh, reset it sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't um, you can take the drive out put the drive back in again sometimes that fixes it uh, if your hard drive is broken sometimes um, this is a, this actually damages the drive um, all of the errors like that um, at least on this model came to uh, this one problem and this is how you fix it without having to buy any or source which is probably going to be more awkward buying isn't a problem you just you just fork out the money but finding the actual part is going to be a bit of a pain so here's how you fix it without bothering to um, go to that trouble so how do you do it well this is all in bits at the moment we'll discuss putting it back together again in a minute but the cable that attaches to the hard drive is a combined SATA data and power cable which then splits into two leads which are very very thin and they are fed from here all the way down to there and if I zoom in on the bit in question you can see there are the two SATA connectors the orange one isn't original it should be this one the problem is I'll put it there is that there's actually you can't really you don't get the feedback I'm getting but when I bend it it gives when it gets to about there So the actual issue is the cable between the motherboard and the hard drive. Uh, that part number is in the description for the video. So if your whatever your Lenovo device is, if your Lenovo device uses that same part number and you get that same error, then this is a fix you can use for, for that device as well. As I say, this is a C440 all-in-one. It uses that particular part number cable. This is how um, you can get away with, well, not get away with this, how you can fix it without really um, having to find the, the part and fork out for that. So, originally, this cable was an all in one like that. And this data bit here plugged in there. And because of the way the cable was fed around and along that edge, up through there, up through there, it was actually screwed in there and the drive would fit in in a little blue cage and lock in. That tensioning of the cable and the fact this is a touch screen and it's an all-in-one and the hard drive isn't horizontal and the fact that the thing gets moved because when you reposition the screen that moves the entire device. Um, in doing that, I think there was a bit of fatigue at this end of the cable and it's broken something inside there. In fact, you can see that the internal cable is visible. I haven't done that, that's how it was. It, it, it wants to fold like that because when they put it in, they put it in, they bent it, they fed it along that edge, they fed it through there, they got it to there and it was screwed in there. So the first thing to do is remove the cable. I'll put the screws back in. The next thing to do is because it's the data bit that's the problem and not the power bit, uh, and perhaps more importantly, because the power bit is actually connected under there, if I zoom in again, you'll get a better view. It's got a proprietary connector. It's not a standard SATA connector. That's why this cable's got a part number, I guess. So 
you don't need to rewire that you don't need to change that you don't need to you know snip it off get yourself a SATA power cable and solder it back on you know bodge it if you like or mod you know mod a cable with that end on it you don't need to do that at all because what you do is um, I used a Dremel on a little stand is you simply get the big cable and you cut the data bit off so you cut this bit off and that gives you the power and then you obviously try and fit it to a drive and it's going to be quite a tight fit it sort of goes around like that so you might you know you just keep trimming it scraping it off grinding it off skimming bits off until the two cables fit and then you can run the cable and when you reassemble it um, the thing will work but here's a note about reassembling it this obviously has been assembled so we'll put it back together there's a massive plate here which means that you can't get access to the SATA connectors without dismantling the entire thing and that plate simply fits on here. The trick here is that there's a little knobbly bits in there that gets a bit of purchase so that it kind of grips it a little bit. There are three screws for that. There is one here one here and one here down the back there's also a little bit of sticky tape there, a little sticky edge on that so you have to get that to make sure that's on correctly because that draws the air through to the fan to blow it out the top once that's in place, um, I'm going to just position these cables a little bit like that. Uh, I've put an SSD in this one uh, because the three and a half inch drive that was supplied originally broke. Um, it was faulty and that was what was thought would be the original fault and that's why we were getting the 1962. No operating system found error. Um, it turns out that, that, that although the drive was faulty, it was a Western Digital and the diagnostic software did pick up the fact that the drive was faulty and um, that wasn't the end of the story so putting a new drive in meant that this fault appeared intermittently and it was because of that that cable so you cut off the data bit you keep the power bit because that isn't going to be faulty and you put yourself in on your own side of cable but I forgot to mention it so I mention it now one end needs to be the right angled end like that so you've got a straight end for the drive and you've got a right angled end for the motherboard bit so it needs to look like that you've probably got one of those knocking about most motherboards come with two of those and then two of the standard ones depending on which model you buy but they invariably come with at least one of those so you've probably got one of those knocking about if you haven't you can buy them for about 70p so 70p or 20 quid for the new cable which because it's a recognised part number is going to do exactly the same thing again that's going to get fatigued and one of the wires inside is going to break or become loose and you're not going to get a very good data connection to the drive and then the motherboard doesn't detect it and there you go you haven't got windows loading the next thing to put back on is the main cover it's a big cover it actually comes off pretty easily there aren't any particular surprises um, but a lot of things are hidden so this is going to help you immensely getting this on and off there's two holes there for the audio connectors they actually poke through so that side goes on first there's a clip there and there is a clip there and those are the clips that and there's one there as well those are the clips that actually fasten to this plastic um, rim that's on the, the grey plastic rim that's on the actual uh, main chassis um, to take it off you take it off from this side and then just wriggle it twist it wriggle it twist it wriggle it twist it wriggle it twist it and it pops off um, because it's plastic there's quite a lot of play in it and you will need to wriggle it a bit just to release the catches so we'll just get that back on Can't get it in the right place
That crunching sounds a bit ominous, but it's fine. There are a number of very big clips along this bottom edge. Which all look, go towards the horrible noises that the thing makes when you fit it back on. You have to give it a bit of a push to get the catches to purchase. Um, don't be afraid. Um, the trick is to use um, the two finger rule. <laughs> so you can flick the V's at people. Um, if you, and this works for any PC component to be honest, if you use two fingers or a finger and a thumb, because they count, then you can apply sufficient force to do the job, but not sufficient force so that you can break anything. Because if you use more than two fingers, you can break stuff. So if you only use two fingers, if it's not working, you're doing it wrong. If you'd want to do it in the way that the designer thought of, then it will work. Because obviously these things are carefully designed, nothing here happens uh, because it's evolved or anything else. Everything here has been put there and all the considerations for how these PCs are assembled governs how they are designed. So in order to make this easy to assemble, they've made it so the back cover simply clips on once you've got that edge in. There's a screw here. There's another one here. They're all the same size screws. Another one, where is it? There we go, this one here. And there's another one here. They don't take much screwing, it's only a few turns of the screwdriver and they're in. Another one there. And one more in there. Yes. So originally the actual cable was routed all the way along this edge through there and screwed in fixed to those spots there so the hard drive fits in locks across and that's what puts it in but the cable isn't quite long enough and when they put it in they twist it bend it stretch it all the way around here there are there are metal clips which means it's under quite a lot of tension so as the thing is moved about and as the thing is tapped and um, use because you get vibrations from the hard drive anyway if it's a mechanical one that's all gonna over a period of time this machine's about a year and a half two years old over a period of time that's all going to contribute to the the damage to the cable and that ultimately broke the hard drive so you think oh it's a hard drive failure yeah it checks out I'll do a diagnostic so you replace the hard drive you go to the trouble of installing windows and then suddenly 1962 error not found and the whole thing happens again this obviously is the fix for that. So uh, there's the stand, and the stand attaches there and there, and there's four screws for that. The stand is actually quite robust. There's a strengthened bracket. It's sort of thicker at this end than it is at that end, because this is the business end, this is the motherboard end. So you don't necessarily want this bit to flex at all. So they've obviously, you know, it's quite well thought out. So there's one screw there, one screw there, and there's another screw here, and there, it's a little bit fiddly. I'll put the other one in first, like that. And there. Like that. That's the stand in place, nice and secure. Uh, this is a SanDisk solid state drive, it's one of the cheaper ones. Um, I was going to RMA it, <laughs> uh, and I was bad mouthing SanDisk. Um, my apologies uh, to SanDisk, not that they're watching. Um, but that clicks on there, and then because I've cut that bit off and shaved it down a bit that bit fits on there and it fits on there quite nicely 
and then the hard drive now fits in there. I'm going to get some um, sticky fixers, those sticky pad things, and put those on it to hold it still. Um, the SATA cable might be a little bit stiff because they tend to be fairly rigid, but obviously they're a lot happier about being bent than the other cable is, which is very, very flimsy, and you get movement, 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 and a bit of fatigue. The last bit to go on uh, would be this plate here, which looks a bit ominous, but it actually only sli it slides on and then clips. So to slide it on, you just push it like that and that's it in. And to take it off, you press it down and then lift it out of the way. I'm going to leave it off for testing um, because that drive obviously isn't attached. So as soon as I pick this up, it's very likely that the drive will fall out. But because I'm confident of the repair, it wouldn't matter. So there it is. How does that fit on the screen? Well, it sort of does. So I just bring that up. Oh, you can see the PC in the background. Uh, leave it on. What you're going to want to do is see it working anyway. So I'll get the various bits and bobs and plug them in. You've got to be careful when you're cutting the cable. It's better to cut more of the data bit than it is to cut the power bit um, for obvious reasons. You can always cut bits off but you can't add bits back on. So the drive is dangling a little bit at the back here. I'll just pop it out of the way. And that's the mains on. And we'll just turn it on and see what happens. I'll plug the keyboard in it's here. And um, there's Windows. Loads very, very fast with the SSD, so I heartily recommend getting an SD in there. The touchscreen is actually quite nice, I quite like the touchscreen. Just to verify that everything's working, um, I'll shut it down. That's it shut down. I mean, it's just blisteringly fast, really. I'll start it up again and I'll tap F1 to get into the BIOS. This is another indication of the problems with the cable. When you go into the BIOS and you do system summary, the hard disk doesn't show up. Which, if you look at this, it's there. So if you've got the fault that this fixes, what you'll find is that the hard drive won't be detecting the BIOS and then you'll wiggle it a bit and it will be and then it'll work and then it won't work and it's it's intermittent but it happens and it can be it's, it's due to that cable. So this bit, this bit here, that bit goes in the bin because that's where the problem is. So all you need to fix the problem is a right angled standard SATA cable and a Dremel or a little knife or a saw or something that you can use to slice the cable that's in there up. If you like what I've done, um, obviously click like. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments. Hope it helps you. Hope it saves you some money. Thanks for watching.